to make Deep House or what was actually Deep House, not this kind of this kind of horse shit that that's played on radio and stuff now, not not that kind of stuff. Um, because I was, I kind of didn't have the confidence to try and make a track that would make people dance. And I thought if I made Deep House, the kind of 118, 120 stuff, it takes away that pressure because you only really kind of would, it would only ever be playing in a bar or something or by a pool. So people would only usually like sway and stuff to it. But um, I got sacked from, from, one of, from one of many jobs that I got sacked from uh, as a PT because like I didn't turn up for work for like three days because I'd been to like an after party and stuff. And so rather than going straight for another job, I thought, right, I'm going to dedicate six months of my life to just solely making music because it had always kind of been a little side project. So I never really had a steady release and I never spent enough time in the studio to actually polish my sound. So I, um, I started, I tried like one, I got offered a remix and I decided to make it a little bit of a harder track. And, um, and it kind of worked. So then I kind of was like, right, I kind of have a little bit of confidence here. So I kind of just started to just make more um, more kind of peak hour tracks. And then you just kind of smooth the edges over time pretty much until it becomes more and more polished. I kind of enjoy, enjoy both of them for different reasons. Um, obviously DJing is amazing and stuff, but production is, is something where you can really kind of hone your craft and, and become more of a of a recognized person as opposed to a DJ. Now that we live in this kind of digital age where anybody can can DJ pretty pretty simply, all they've got to do is download some software and then and then they're ready to go. They can go get go get paid to play. Um, whereas production that's where kind of you, you can really kind of stretch your legs and you can do stuff that other people can't do. That's what differentiates the two. Um, and, and it's good to kind of be in the studio and be making something and you think this is gonna this is gonna sound so good when I play it. You get like you get the same kind of buzz, but um, but for different reasons. I mean, then when you get to get to actually play the track out and test it, and you kind of feel really nervous before it's about to drop and stuff in case it see how to you're like apprehensive on how it's gonna go down. Um, both are kind of really great feelings. So. Uh, to kind of put a bit, say, use a bit of a cheesy line, they're both not mutually exclusive, if that makes sense. What I'm gonna do with clap two, is pan that to the left, only a little bit, like, so let's try, let's try 18. And then on clap one, I'm just gonna pan that to the right. Same thing. So essentially your ears are going to be picking up the fact that there's sounds coming from different individual speakers. So... Right, so that sounds okay, but the thing that you want to double check on to make sure that everything is okay in terms of your levels is just make sure that these, these are actually the same because if you've got one that's really, really high and one that's low, then obviously it's going to be it's going to be uneven when you listen to it, which is something that you don't want. So we can see that clap one is quite a lot higher than clap two. So So just get that to a level where you, to a point where you think, right, I'm happy with kind of how that sounds coming out of coming out of both speakers. Just use that as a little bit of referencing for yourself. So um, what I'm going to do now, just to give this even more uh, bite, is I'm going to add a third clap. This is like pretty much just a top up, just because we've got these pan to to different speed to different sides. I think it's important to have have one that's central, so you have got something coming out essentially in in mono. Um, so we'll do exactly the same thing. And just check as well, because sometimes your some of the samples will slightly be off a little bit. So if you're unsure, just double check on this to see actually where they actually are coming out from in terms of the, the panning of them. 
So if we look at that third one that I've just put in, you can see that it's ever so slightly panning a little bit more to the right. So all we need to do, obviously, to, to rectify that. is just drag it to the left a little bit. That only that's a, I don't know why, but just some some sample packs just 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 work out like like that. Uh, I've I've seen some where like the kick drum is even panned to the left and the right. It's weird. So just when you're kind of using sample packs and stuff, just just double check because the last thing that you want really is is like a kick that's panned more to to one side. It's gonna sound stupid. And this is essentially all you're doing. You're literally just taking it step by step on these on these dials, just until you try and find something that is a nice kind of smooth low frequency. Especially if you you're making like a, a housey track, the more kind of harsh it is, the further away it comes away from being a house track. So try and try and work with something until you feel like you've got something that you can work with. So that. That still needs a little bit of tweaking, in my opinion, to, to make it kind of more well-rounded. But um, what I've done is I've actually kind of already saved this as a preset that I spent a little bit more time on myself. So all I'm gonna do on this last note, it's kind of the same principle that I'm using with the with the with the high with the snares that we used. I don't really want this same melody rolling through every every four beats because I, I think it will get pretty repetitive. So all I'm going to do is something really, really, really small, but it will it will make a difference because it is in essentially changes the melody from a a four beat a four beat melody to an eight. So all I've done is moved this note up just from A1 to C2. Right, so that sounds okay, but it sounds a, it sounds a little bit dry and it sounds quite um it sounds it doesn't sound very well rounded. So all I'm going to do it sounds quite sharp. So let's solo that. All I'm going to do is just push the release up here, and all that release does is it it basically is just going to elongate the note the the note that you that you're playing. So if you turn it off, I'll pull it right down. It's very stop start, like it's it's it, it starts. I mean, the start has nothing to do with it, but it, it ends very very quickly. So there's no kind of there's no tail off or anything like that. If I turn this up, you can see that it's starting to elongate that note. So all I'm going to do is find somewhere that I think is a good balance for it. And let's try that with the track. Right, cool. Next bit, even though that's got delay on it here in the pre in its own uh, its own effects thing, I am going to yeah because you can see it, these are all the effects that you can put on it actually in the VST itself. So there are delays already on there, but what I'm going to do. If you obviously click on delay, then obviously it will bring up the 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 effects and stuff. What you can how you can tweak that, like your your wet and stuff like that, high and low cut. So I'm going to keep that as it is, but I'm just going to add a second delay. So same thing again. We'll go on to simple delay. Just keep it pretty basic. 